Welcome back to the Sports Mag Zone. We kick things off with football action in the UEFA Champions League resumed earlier on this Tuesday with uh, the first half of the scheduled for match day two in one of Sports Match's three commentary games on the day. Atletico Madrid away at the, well, they went to the San Siro to face AC Milan and they went a goal down early. Did they mount the fight back? We have the highlights. It has been far too long, but after more than seven years without it, UEFA Champions League football is back for AC Milan at San Siro. Kessi stood it up well, tricky one to deal with. Rabic can't get there, Brahim Diaz can. Brahim Diaz carved it out well for Rafael. Poke forwards by Lamar, Renan Lodi in round the back, danger, oh yes! What a way for Antoine Griezmann to get his goal! Suarez gets it back, Correa cleared as far as Lamar, oh they're asking for a hand there, it's a penalty! Atletico have a penalty in the third minute of additional time. Suarez, oh, he scores. His first Champions League goal for Atletico wins them the game at AC Milan. And that is it. What drama at the San Siro. Atletico Madrid come from behind to snatch it against the 10 men in stoppage time. Antoine Griezmann has been in the doldrums since leaving Barcelona on deadline day to go back to Atletico. And he came up with a vital equaliser setting the stage for Luis Suarez to give uh, Diego Simeone's men all three points. In another game that you could have seen live on sports, back, Liverpool went to Portugal to play Porto at the Dragao. Suitably well received by the crowd as well. It is Liverpool who will get us underway and Jordan Henderson who scored a cracking winning goal against uh, Milan at Anfield on the opening match night. 3-2, a fantastic match between those two sides. Robertson. Collecting from Fabinho. Now with Curtis Jones. Up against Cordoso. Decent effort as well. Salah's there and rolls it over the line. And Liverpool have the lead. Ball kept in there by uh, Curtis Jones. Fabinho. Heading for the last 30 seconds of the first half as James Milner whips it in. Dangerous looking ball. Great chance. Sadio Mane was there to roll the ball home. Almost on the stroke of half time. And it is a 2 0 lead that Liverpool richly deserve. Loose with his control. Just left the door ajar for Liverpool to retrieve possession. That's exactly what Curtis Jones has done. And now red shirts are flooding forward. Salah here with a chance to make it three. And he doesn't miss chances like that. Liverpool catching Porto on the break. Busy play by Vieira once more. That's an excellent ball in. And headed home by Mehdi Taremi. And Porto are on the board with just over 15 minutes remaining. So... Cracking matching prospect there. This is Curtis Jones, composed under pressure, sending it forward, oh. looking for Firmino. The goalkeeper's a mile off his line and has the ball got enough to go over the line before he gets there? Well, that's going to be a tight call. We wait for the signal, and is it going to be a fourth goal for Liverpool? I think it is. I think it is. It did look as if the ball had gone over the line. You just have to hold your hand up. And hopefully do better next time. Yeah, well, Porto certainly, yes, as, as the shot comes in from Curtis Jones, falling at the feet of Firmino, who puts it home. And the flag has gone up on the far side. Well, it will be checked, of course, but he looked offside, didn't he? That's a goal. Mo Salah, who set them on the road to victory. 
ended the night with two goals. So did Roberto Firmino, who came off the bench. Right, so that's what happened. Two goals for Salah, two goals for Firmino, one for Sadio Mane. Uh, Liverpool, five goals in that game. Porto with one, so 5-1, the end result to Jurgen Klopp's men. So these are the results on the day, the complete results. Ajax beat Besiktas 2-0. No goals between Inter and Shakhtar, the only draw on the day. Confirming that Atletico Madrid beating beat AC Milan 2 Milan 2-1. No Horland in the Dortmund 11, but they still beat a Sporting Lisbon 1-0. Liverpool, yeah, confirming that scoreline over FC Porto. PSG goals from Idrissa Ghana Gay in the eighth minute. And Lionel Messi in the second half beat Man City 2-0. Club Brugger beat RB Leipzig 2-1. And in the shock of the day, perhaps the shock of the, well, definitely the shock of the Champions League so far, Real Madrid beaten by the Moldovan team, Sheriff Tiraspol, 2-1. It was 1-1 after Benzema had equalized. And then a long-range bomb from the Sheriff Tiraspol team, giving them all three points. A famous victory over Carlo Ancelotti's men at the Santiago Bernabeu. Simon Evans, our football man in Europe. Uh, joins us now. Simon, are you there? Good. Let's start with that result over there at the Bernabeu. Sheriff Tiraspol arresting Real Madrid and charging them twice. Yeah, incredible result. Absolutely a uh, huge shock uh, with that. A team coming into their first Champions League campaign from Moldova. No one gave them a chance and, and they take the league and then withstand Real Madrid coming back at them and, and pull off a shock with that uh, screamer at the end. Yep. To the PSG match we go now without further ado. The fact is that when Man City beat this PSG, well, beat PSG last season en route to that final, uh, Neymar was the only real soldier left standing because the rest of the front line was hobbled. Uh, Kylian Mbappe, who had played some of the first leg but was clearly not at his best due to an injury, missed the second leg. And we wondered what kind of contest it would have been had PSG been at full strength, especially on, their for on the forward line. Well, we didn't have to wonder about that because we saw the full attacking contingent there. Messi now added to the mix and they were two goals better than Man City at the end. For those who didn't see the game, um, Simon, based on your assessment, was 2-0 a fair result based on the run of play? Well, it's an interesting one, really, because, you know, um, City did have more of the ball and, and more of the opportunities, really. Um, and although Paris Saint-Germain's attack is, is remarkable and, and people think they're going to be this carefree attacking side, they were actually set up in a pretty uh, defensive formation, really. They got a lot of men behind the ball, they frustrated Manchester City and basically played on the counter-attack at home, which isn't a bad thing to do when your counter-attack ends with uh, Messi putting the ball in the top corner, of course. But it really was a very mature and, and very canny performance from, from PSG, I think, and, and one which suggests to me that more than some performance where we see the stars performing attack, this is the kind of performance that the teams that win this competition deliver. Yeah, Simon, you know, since uh, Messi signed up for PSG, I've been salivating at the prospects of having the silky skills of Lionel Messi combined with the uh, speed and, and, and the sort of quickness of a Kylian Mbappe. And I saw uh, uh, there were several moments today where Mbappe and Messi combined in some very, very um, clinical and, and um, solid football. Yeah, absolutely. And the goal, you know, where, where Mbappe tees up uh, Messi there, you see it there, that little layoff. Very unselfish, willing to be the supporting uh, act to Messi for that goal. There were always going to be concerns about with such big names and big egos in attack, whether or not they'd be willing to, to do things like that. And uh, absolutely linking up perfectly. And, and Neymar's movement. You know, he didn't do many amazing things, but his movement, his darting about, his stretching the defence works really well. Messi actually played quite deep for a lot of the game, as we saw him towards the end of his time at Barcelona, almost uh, as a withdrawn into midfield, really. Um, but he did show signs of being, of being something that could work really, really well for PSG. Yeah, I thought that when um, Pochettino replaced Messi the last time and there was some tension between them, it may have sparked uh, a sort of a, uh, an injection from, from Messi today. Uh, did you see anything in Messi's game today that suggested that he you know, is ready to show his best for PSG? 
Yeah, I think so. I think I think it was above all, it was you know an extremely professional and disciplined performance. He's playing in in a specific role there, and it was a good team display from PSG. And Messi played his part in that. It wasn't all about let's get the ball to Messi and hope he can produce something magical. It wasn't like that at all. They, of course, they look to their three forwards when they get on the break. But it was it was actually the other side of the game that for me was most impressive about PSG, the way they put up the the block at the back and, and frustrated Raheem Sterling and Kevin De Bruyne and, and Jack Grealish and Manchester City's attacking talents. Yeah, stay with us, Simon. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about Milan in the Champions League once again. And I'll ask you to comment on that old war horse still scoring goals for Real Madrid, still leading the line. His name, Karim Benzema. Antoine Griezmann bringing his French, well, bringing his former the French international team to the four for Atletico Madrid in that come from behind 2-1 win at AC Milan at the San Siro. Very strong turnout for the Rossoneri, who are back in Europe after, well, back at Europe's top table after a seven-year absence. Remember, they are seven times winners of the Champions League, one, the, one of the most torrid teams in the history of European and world football. But they haven't been at this level for a while, and Simon, it started very well for them and was going very well for uh, AC Milan until Frank Kessie got that red card in the first half. Yeah, it did change the game, that, and, and it, was, it was a shame for Milan because the atmosphere there looked like something close to the, the, the great days for Milan. I mean, the team still isn't one of those anywhere near the level of those great Milan teams of the past. But the fans, there was a big banner saying, AC Milan are back. Well, they're not quite back yet, um, but they are back in the Champions League. And, uh, you know, it was a performance as it was against Liverpool, which indicated, you know, they've got a fighting chance in the group, but they've got to start to be a little bit more clinical at both ends of the fields if they're going to get out of this group. Yeah, uh, you, know, you know, Simon, one of the things about Atletico Madrid for me is that if you go way back in time, and I'm, well, not way back in time, the 90s are not, are, are not so far away uh, in, in the past, but one of the things about Atletico Madrid is that they've always had outstanding strikers. Always. If you draw a line from Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank uh, through to Kun Aguero, through to uh, David Silva, uh, through to Diego Costa, through to Griezmann, and a couple of others that I would have missed. Diego Tristan, the, 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 the Spaniard who was also there for a spell as well. They've always had outstanding frontmen. And that has been able to, the, the, the coach has been able to build a team around the exploits of an outstanding goal core. I did say, for, I, I didn't miss Fernando Torres for spite uh, Liverpool fans. He was also a part of the Atletico Madrid production line as well. The point I'm making is that now that on paper you'd say, hmm, Diego Simeone has what his predecessors didn't have. Whereas previous coaches for Atletico Madrid had one outstanding striker. He has two, Antoine Griezmann, goal scorer, and Luis Suarez, of course. And yet, in league play, there's not that fluency and not that certainty that Atletico will find a goal from either of those two sources in the game. And in today's game, it was a bit of a struggle until Griezmann popped up late in the game and then Suarez came at the death to tuck away that penalty. So you'd have thought that with more riches at his disposal, at Diego Simeone, that Atletico would be even more fluent and be more dangerous. But it's not quite turned out that way, even though his two main men got the job done for him today. Yeah, it's not quite turned out that way yet, I'd say, because, you know, it does take time for, for strikers, especially... Uh, those top-level strikers to develop the kind of understanding not only between themselves as a partnership but also with their midfield. And Griezmann coming back, it is a, it is quite a different Atletico team to the one he left behind. So you know, it it does take a bit of time. We're still early in the season, and and, and tonight, you know, to see those names on the score sheet will will, will please Simeone as well as that result. And, and offers hope that maybe Atletico, you know, d domestically as well, can really start to click in that area. 
Yeah, and I can have cause to not criticize Griezmann after the weekend La Liga games for not scoring and not being his French national team self. What about Karim Benzema though? We touched briefly on Sheriff Tiraspol and Real Madrid at the top of the, the interview, Simon. But I just want to go back to Karim Benzema. I noted that this was the 17th Champions League season that Karim Benzema is scoring in. That's remarkable because that stretches back. I was watching this man in the Champions League when I was a university student and not quite close to graduation just yet, Simon. And now I'm getting to be an old man like yourself and like Lance and Karim Benzema is still scoring goals at the top level in the Champions League. It is a remarkable thing. He's now fourth on his own, 72 goals on the list of all-time Champions League goal scorers and he just keeps going on. He does, and, 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 and I think still underrated by a lot of people, you know, for what he's done, because he's been in the shadow so many times of, I mean, going back to the start, you know, you're talking about, about uh, you know, a Galacticos team um, with all those big names in it, but even until recently, you know, Ronaldo was there until a couple of years ago, so he was always uh, the, the sideshow, but scoring goals consistently, you know, people would be getting excited about what Cristiano did, but quite often it was Benzema who was getting the crucial goal. So I think he, he will, when, when he finally hangs up his boots, he will be remembered as one of Europe's top goal scorers, uh, an absolutely fundamental part of Real Madrid's uh, extremely successful um, spell in the Champions League. And, uh, you know, maybe we don't appreciate him enough while he's still around. Yeah, must admit, Simon, that I give him a, a, a lot of stick from time to time. But it's only for his league play that I've had cause to criticise him. But really, he should be beyond criticism for what he has done in his career, Karim Benzema, for what he has won. I want to draw your attention to the fact of uh, the, the small matter of a match in the, 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 the Premier League this weekend between Liverpool and Man City and ask about the contrasting emotion of both teams and their managers going into the clash you know very well that what happens in Europe often sets the tone for what a team will do in the Premier League for the next couple of rounds or so City beaten at PSG not score failing to score that's a problem but Liverpool getting five and easy and getting an outstanding performance from young Curtis Jones I was watching that game while paying attention to the other big games Curtis Jones was rather impressive but Klopp would be very happy that Firmino got two Salah got two Mane got one his main men on the score sheet are none of his youngsters excelling in the midfield Klopp happy Guardiola frustrated and with some problems absolutely yeah and I think uh yeah, you know, Liverpool are almost going under the radar this season. It seems strange to say for such a big club, but, you know, they're winning very convincingly. And, and, you know, a week ago, you know, sometimes the newspapers can get a little bit carried away with the narratives, as we've talked about before. And a week ago, the Premier League title was Chelsea's to lose, according <laughs> to some pundits. Um, and now, you know, you look at Liverpool and think, you know, how could anyone not be considering them to be part of the title race? They absolutely are. It's a huge game against City. Um, Liverpool come into it full of confidence. You're absolutely right. I think Klopp about Curtis Jones. And I think, again, that just shows the quality of manager that, that Liverpool have. Klopp can look at a player who hasn't played much. He, he was a fringe player for, for the last couple of seasons, being brought through and, and given his opportunities sparingly. And he's playing like somebody who's been there for five years. I mean, the confidence and swagger he showed tonight in Porto was incredible. So, you know, I think... Liverpool are starting that game as favourites, but you know, as we saw last week with Manchester City um, going to Chelsea, Pep Guardiola's side are rather good at changing the narrative very quickly. Yep, yep. Uh, there's a young Englishman who really caught the eye, well, has caught the eye for Borussia Dortmund since going over Jude Bellingham. And many people, Simon, were laughing when Birmingham City, his club in England, his, 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 his youth club, retired his jersey upon his move to Germany. They're saying, how can you retire the jersey of a teenager who hasn't even played 50 games for the club, hasn't really proven anything? But when you see the class of the boy on the field, he got an assist today in their 1-0 win against Sporting Lisbon. You can see what that decision was informed by and you can see what the hype about. Simon Evans, Jude Bellingham looks like the real deal already and he's not even 20 fully. No, absolutely. And I can tell you that Manchester United, who tried very hard to sign him when, before he went to Dortmund, are still watching him very closely, but they're absolutely sickened that they didn't manage to get that deal over the line because exactly the sort of player who would fit into that United midfield and answer quite a few of the problems they've got there. 
Outstanding talent. I thought he would have played a little bit more in the European Championships this summer, but Gareth Southgate holding him back. I think we'll see him at the World Cup. He continues to progress like this. He's going to be a regular fixture in the England midfield, and he will he will move on from Dortmund to uh, you know, with all respect to them, to a bigger club somewhere, whether it's United or somewhere else. He really is the real deal. Absolutely. Yeah, and 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 I remember the, the, the curious thing for me is that there are so many players, Simon who flop in the Premier League and you wonder what the hype was all about, especially when they come for big money and they leave and they have a new lease on life. And immediately I'm saying this to you, I remembered one of the outstanding Atletico strikers that I failed to mention, Diego Forlan, the former Pichichi winner, the leading scorer in Spain after going back from Manchester United. I say that, I make that point to mention Sebastian Haller, who played for West Ham, Looked like a fridge on two wheels in some games to me. Looked like he couldn't hit a barn door with a banjo uh, at some point. And he's ripping it up for Ajax. Four goals in their previous Champions League game. Another one today. Was he really that good a player? Was West Ham really holding him down? Or is he, has he done some introspection and gone up a level since his move from England to the Dutch Eredivisie? Well, there's some things, sometimes players just don't click at clubs, don't they? It can be whatever it can be, whether they don't get on with the coach, they haven't quite got a good understanding with their teammates, or even they don't like where they're living. They don't feel good during the rest of the time they're at the club. So, you know, of course the Dutch league is, is an easier one to, to score goals in than the Premier League in a lot of ways, but he's doing it in the Champions League as well. And we see this, uh, you know, quite frequently with players who who seem like uh, people look at them and go, didn't he play for uh, that club? You know, it's just the same guy. You know, you see, it's a guy in the centre of midfield for Paris Saint-Germain, looking like a top-class international midfielder who didn't impress people that much when he was at Everton. So this happens quite a lot in football, and, and there's so many random factors when uh, people move around a lot during their clear career and end up at the club and have to settle very quickly. Absolutely so. And as I mentioned the Diego Ford, and this is a show that we mention and we give facts to, to viewers, I picked the wrong Diego. Tristan played for Deportivo La Coruña. It's Diego Ford and I was searching for to make the point about the outstanding line of strikers that have played for Atletico Madrid over time. All right, Simon, that's it for today. But as we look forward to tomorrow, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the manager that... I know you're not joining me on this one, Simon, and I like when you join me on the points I make, but that's fine. I, I think the job is bigger than him. I wouldn't mind if someone else took over. He has a big task on his hand tomorrow's, tomorrow because I, I, th I tell you, if he can't get by Villarreal in that Champions League games, then many people who are silent now about his future will now join the Ole Out Brigade. I don't know if that will be justified or not. I'm saying all of that to say it's a big game for the Red Devils in that Champions League game against Villarreal. Oh, it's huge. There's no doubt about it. And it's also a very different goal one because we saw these two teams play each other in the Europa League final last year and, and, and the United struggled against that organisation. Very well organised side, Villarreal. Very hard to break down, which is something that United have been struggling with a little bit. So it, it is huge. They got off to a poor start in the Champions League uh, with the defeat in Switzerland to follow it up by, with another bad result after the disappointment against Aston Villa as well and going out of the uh, Carabao Cup, the pressure would certainly be more than mounting on uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer if that was the case. So he badly needs uh, three points from that Champions League game tomorrow. Excellent. Thank you very much, Simon. All the best to you, and we'll catch up again. Will do. All the best. Yeah, and of course, more midweek Champions League action coming up on Wednesday. Uh, former president of the Bahamas Basketball Association, Mario Boleg, is now the Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture. He's set to join us later in the show. And jockey Samantha Fletcher created history in Jamaica on Monday. She's set to join us later as well. The 90-minute Sports Mac Zone continues after the break.